I'm super excited because today we are going to plant the foundation for our front yard permaculture food forest. That foundation consists of the larger trees of our food forest. Then as we grow and build upon it, we will plant understory trees underneath that and shrubs and ground cover and vines, making the perfect food forest for our family to thrive on. All right, I just got my Stark Brothers order unpacked. These were a beautiful gift that my friend purchased from the Mother's Day sale they had. So we got them in buckets of water while we dig some holes. We've got some black tartarian sweet cherry, two of those. And then we got two apples. We've got Jonna Red Jonathan Apple, which is a semi-dwarf, and the pink, pink lady apple, pink lady apple, which is a dwarf. And we got Shiro Plum and Crimson Snow Nectarine, along with a handful of smaller plants like gooseberries and grapes and muscadines. So we're really excited to be adding to our food forest. The trees will go directly into the ground and will be properly staked and maintained. So for the bigger trees, we are gonna use our front yard, turning it into a food forest, starting out with the largest trees planted first. And then as we go, we will probably add understory fruit that accompanies them in a permaculture method. So I don't know if you can see, I've put bamboo stakes in the front yard where I want Ryan to dig a hole. Poor Ryan, always having to dig the holes for me. But he's super excited. He got excited when he saw the apples, especially Ryan and the boys, and I usually, but mostly Ryan and Liam, eat an apple every single day. Know the old saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So it's super healthy. Yay. You hit another rock, Ryan? Yeah. Oh, you love digging holes, though. Yeah, you know I do about that. What do you do about that? Uh-oh, you look mad. You're scaring me. I'm not mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad at all. I'm telling you, ladies, get you one of these. I mean, you know, a good pickaxe, of course. Uh. So once the hole is dug, we fill it up with water all the way to the top and let it drain. Unfortunately, in Georgia with our very, very clay soil, it's not draining very fast. So Ryan's digging the last hole now. We'll fill it with water and then we will walk away from this project for a little bit let the water drain and then come back and plant them this afternoon. Some of the other plants that we got from Stark Brothers is this variegated pink lemon, pink Eureka lemon, and this Borealis honeyberry, and some Prima Arc 45 blackberry canes. So these, I don't have a spot ready yet. So they're gonna be potted up into a bigger one gallon container so that I can keep them healthy until we are ready to plant them in the ground. I'm the inspector. I gotta inspect. Let's see, did he do it? Oh, he did it well. He did a good job. So you wanna make sure that your graft point, which is usually going to be a big fat knuckle, a lot of times they'll mark it with paint, is well above the soil line, but that your roots are well covered. 
So he's going to do this to each of these trees, filling in the soil, back filling with the native soil with just a little bit of compost mixed in because we had such issues with the drainage. We want to make sure that we don't end up waterlogging these. You notice he's adding the stake so that it can help support the tree's growth in this early stage while he backfills with native soil with just a little bit of compost mixed in. And normally I wouldn't do that, but because the issues were so bad, we need to, we have to, we have no choice. It's um, something that used to be recommended years ago is to mix compost into your native soil, but soil scientists have discovered that it's actually better if you just use the native soil. The plant does not go into as much shock if it never has a change in the soil structure as it grows out. So if you add just a little bit of compost, that's okay, but don't do the 50-50 mix of olden days. So due to the fact that the water was not draining in these holes at all, last night when we went to go plant, they were still full of water. So we had to wait till tonight. So our plants did soak for 24 hours, which is about the max I would do. And after that, they might start getting a little too waterlogged. This beautiful compost will be applied in a circle around each of the trees without touching the stem. It's very important that you make sure you leave a gap between the stem and your compost or mulch. But then adding a nice circle to encourage the root system to go further out and help keep the moisture in during times of dry periods. Good job. So I think we're going to do about a foot ring of compost, a few inches deep going around for nutrition to feed the plant, and then we'll do another layer on top of that of wood chips and make it slightly wider than that. But you see how he's not putting anything in that middle ring, that, that 10 inch diameter, is that the right word? The 10 inch diameter across the root ball. We don't want to smother the roots. We just want to feed them. So allowing the nutrition that the compost has to be brought down through to the root system and the soil around the roots every time it rains and every time we water will help get these plants well established. We got the stakes in. Um, gonna have to attach with something here at some point probably just use some jute twine for now and maybe get something a little more sturdy for these trees so we do tend to get a few wind storms here all right we've got all of them in the ground we've added compost they're doing great now we just need to get some peaches and pears up here and we will be done with the main large trees that we're gonna have in our food forest as we build and grow, we can add other things in the understory below them. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.